Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 adventure. I'm not going to apologize for this one being late, because I feel like I apologize every video for being late. Well, my goal was a video a month, and obviously it's been four months since my last KSP2 video. But to be perfectly honest, I was just totally burned out with the problems in the game, and I needed to step away. Honestly, the state that it's in now at version 0.2 with the 4 science update, highly recommend diving in and playing with it now. There's actually stuff here to enjoy instead of just pulling out your own hair. When I dove in and started fiddling around with this update, my big objective was to try something out with the re-entry heating. I gradually came to terms with it needs to be a space plane and not just a booster with some wings on it. So I went back to the drawing board and figured out a way to just make it an aircraft. Biggest changes here from the prototype you saw just a second ago, I needed some kind of vertical stabilizers and I ended up going for a vertical stabilizer at the end of each wing. And then I needed some kind of crew compartment because I really wanted it to be able to fly crew, but also I just think spaceships are more fun when they're flown by people instead of a computer. And I came up with this idea of bolting basically an aircraft fuselage to the side of the thing. And in the future, it's going to double as an escape pod. My building routine is a lot of throwing parts together, checking lift, thrust, and center of mass, going out on a test flight, blowing it up somehow, coming back in here, and then adjusting things but then also adding stuff I know I'll need later like right now I'm adding thrusters so I can maneuver above the atmosphere but uh, spoiler alert this ends up being way too little thrusters I'm just not used to how wimpy they are in this game right now in development I'm testing the ability to take off and land it it takes off the runway like a feather it just it seems lighter than air uh, during landing, though, I noticed something interesting. One of my landing gears looked like it was totally bent sideways or was going to pop right off. And uh, I checked it in the builder, and sure enough, it was all just very slightly askew when I attached it. So I'm not sure how that happened, but it's a miracle these Kerbals didn't die. Technically, that passed my takeoff and landing test, but especially with the weird landing gear thing and then having to reattach the landing gear, had to test it again. Thankfully, it, it flawlessly passed the next test. At this point, I was just kind of flying around and seeing what it could handle, and I decided to make a go at the island runway. Well, of course, I've been short-fueling the tanks that are on here. It can hold a ton of rocket fuel, but that's not what I want to test. I want to test how well it flies when it's pretty much empty. Well, I didn't put a lot of gas in it, and so I didn't make it to the island runway. Um, I didn't get it recorded, but I had a soft landing in the ocean, and that's where I had a little happy accident, and I started exploring this thing as a seaplane. I'm so excited that they patched in buoyancy. It opens so many possibilities, and this little portable swimming pool is cool as hell. It, it's kind of weird and kind of janky that you can see the sun uh, illuminating inside of the rocket, but uh, I really do like the water graphics overall, and uh, Valentina is excited as hell about it. Seriously, the possibilities of this cool as hell. So now that I know it can land in the water, which is awesome for recoverability, I had to find out if it can also take off from the water, and it can. So at this point, the prototype is really close to just ready for a space mission. Yes, this is actually supposed to be a spaceship after all. But the one thing I haven't tested yet is the escape pod, and yes, this should have a functioning escape pod on it. I'm really impressed with the progress this game has made. If it was like this when it came out last year, the reception would have been much better. Uh, I don't really know the details with licensing and whatnot, but if they could have released early access 40 or 50 bucks and included the original KSP with it, like as a concession, this isn't ready yet. Uh, I think they would have been much better off, but... Anyway, a year later, what, 10 months later, it's looking good, it's running a lot better, I'm getting like an average of 60 frames a second, it's going as high as 120 in the builder, you know, big asterisks, this computer is like a year old, I built it around when KSP2 came out, it's a uh, 
AMD Ryzen 7 5800X with an 8-core CPU at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, for my graphics card, I've got a Radeon uh, 6950 TX, and, and there's 30 gigs of RAM in the computer. And so this thing's a beast, but the beast is running it well, where I used to get, like, maybe 30 on a good day, frames a second, so world's a difference. Well, we're coming up on needing to test that escape pod here, so fingers crossed it doesn't explode. Oh, hey, it didn't explode. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. I'm counting that as it works. Yeah, that works. Nicely done. All right, so I have an escape pod. And the way I designed it, this should also be a good escape pod if it needs to sit in orbit and wait for somebody to rescue it. Well, now it's time to strap this plane to a rocket and fire it off into space and hopefully deliver the first module of a space station. That's my goal. I'm going to try to build an LKO space station using only this launch vehicle. And the uh, first stage, at least, on this thing will eventually be made to be reusable. But right now, it just needs to get the thing into space and prove that it works. I'm loving this complete removal of the Wiggly Noodly Rockets. Uh, I was kind of with the developers on that one, honestly, where part of the personality of Kerbal is that things go a little spaghetti sometimes. I guess the primary rule is that it shouldn't impede the fun. And I'm definitely having a lot of fun being able to just go crazy with what I build and know that it's going to hold together. Well, here we are, parked in orbit. Now we just fine-tune our orbit a bit to wherever we want to put this space station, and then we're going to drop this core off and then back home, hopefully. The biggest thing that's going to need to be solved on the next version of this is that the, uh, the monopropellant thrusters have, like, no kick in this game. And so I need to decide if I want to just maybe quadruple the number of thrusters, so I think it's going to make sense to go to Werner engines and just use liquid fuel for that. But other than that, it's pretty solid. But then after dropping the space station off and getting out of there and trying to ditch my taxi stage, I couldn't decouple it. And I'm not sure why I didn't get it recorded, but I had to just activate the engines and blow the thing up. Also, during re-entry, I didn't get a clip recorded for some reason. Probably just distracted trying to fly the thing. But I ended up tumbling end over end, and it way threw off my landing target, which was the Kerbal Space Center runway. But thankfully, this thing's a seaplane, so I was able to take it in over the ocean. And I'm actually not too far off coast from the Kerbal Space Center. Uh, maybe four times out past the little island runway. I'm really happy with how this ship's turned out so far. I'm definitely going to fly more missions with it, fine-tune that thruster problem. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate uh, a like, a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, that would be rad. Tune in next time for another Kerbal Adventure, hopefully in a month. We'll, we'll see.